What's up, guys? Gals, people, humans, animals. Sean here, mostly metal. Uh, I'm here to enter Todd the Thrashing Zombies uh, 200 subs contest. So shout out to him. Congrats on 200. I think he has over 200 now. Uh, relatively newerish channel like mine. Uh, mine's been around for a couple years, but I was not consistently putting out videos like I am now. So um, again, congrats to him. And uh, this will be an entry into uh, his contest. Uh, first off, this is not. This is a Three Floyd's Brewery shirt. There's a three and an F. Um, this is not associated with Nazis or anything. I get asked about this shirt all the time. Um, so just putting it out there. Not a Nazi, I promise. Um, so his first question. Um, in your collection, pull up a album that has a zombie song about zombies or has the word zombie in it. And then talk about your favorite zombie movie. And if you don't like those kinds of movies, your favorite movie of all time. Um, so this is a pretty easy, quick one for me. Um, I don't have al all albums, by the way. I think Todd primarily has albums, but um, I didn't have all of this stuff on vinyl. So um, Astro Zombies by The Misfits out on Walk Among Us. Um, not my favorite Misfits song. You can see there at the bottom, second to the last song, Astro Zombies. Uh, this is a great melodic uh, Misfits album if you like horror, punk rock. I've talked about Misfits a few times. Uh, if you don't know them, you're a, a young whippersnapper and you're trying to get into punk rock. I've said it before. If you like horror and you like punk, check out the Misfits. And I thought it was very fitting that we're going to talk about a zombie movie. I think Dawn of the Dead is probably a popular one for a lot of folks, so I kind of chose one. Um, that was kind of obscure, yet a great movie. And it's one that I don't hear a lot of people ever talk about. It's Girl, The Girl with All the Gifts. Uh, it was kind of this movie about... Uh, it was like a plague. And they called the zombies hungries instead of like zombies or walkers. Like in The Walking Dead, they called them hungries. Uh, but the only people that weren't affected by this were young kids. So they protected these young kids and, and did a lot of experiments and whatnot on them. It's kind of about this journey... Um, between uh, this young child and some soldiers uh, to get answers um, on why it doesn't affect children and whatnot. It, it was a British film, if I remember correctly, that came out about five years ago. Um, I'll put a link below to, to something that you can go check it out, maybe on IMDb or something. But it's a fantastic movie. A lot of people um, have never talked about it or brought it up, which is kind of surprising to me because it had a big actress in it. I can't remember, can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, number two, two songs by two different bands with the same title. So this was a hard one. Uh, I tried to do it off the top of my head, and I couldn't. Um, so what I did is I went to Spotify, and I sorted by song title. That was a challenge because I've got songs on my favorites list that I don't actually physically own copies of. So it took a bit of scrolling, um, but I found uh, a couple. Um, the song is Call to Arms. Um, it is the title track from this album by the band hardcore band sick of it all um this is a, a great album i think there's probably five or six or seven now that i think about it, great songs on this uh this is during their fat records era which some people didn't care for quite as much uh, when they put out yours truly people were kind of like eh. um so the song and the title of the album is called arms and then the other artist that has a song called called arms different genre but sturgill simpson has a song called call to arms if you uh it's kind of about it's a if i remember correctly and i did my research correctly it's about soldiers guarding poppy fields in the middle east um and he played this song called arms instead of his bigger hits on saturday night live you can see there at the bottom it's the last song on the album great album by the way um they actually wrecked the the stage and when i mean wrecked i mean they were jamming on Call to Arms. It's it's not really a country song. It's more of a blues rock and roll song. And uh, the keyboard player, the piano player, was standing up on the uh, piano, and it was on wheels, and Sturgill kicked it, and he was moving around. The drummer was going nuts. Um, I'll link it below. Highly recommend you check that out. If you're not a fan of Sturgill Simpson, um, forget about what you've heard, that it's just twangy country. Um, he does all kinds of, of stuff, so I'll link that video below, and you metalheads will, will appreciate it as well. 
Uh, next question, two albums from 1976, um, kind of celebrating the 200th anniversary of the United States. Don't have a lot from 1976, but what I do have um, are, it's, was pretty good. Um, this is an album I also think everyone should own that came out in 76. Um, Wanted the Outlaws. Um, this has Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Jesse Coulter, and Tempal Glasser. Um, if you don't know, Waylon Jennings and Jesse Coulter were married for a time, and Shooter Jennings is their son. If you've heard of Shooter Jennings, he produced the latest Marilyn Manson album. Um, but this is when true outlaw country actually meant something. Um, My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys, you've probably heard a million times. Good Hearted Woman. Um, T is for Texas, Suspicious Minds. Um, I'm Looking for Blue Eyes from Jesse Coulter. It's all here. And this is, again, when, when being an outlaw in country actually um, meant something, not like the fake outlaw country that is out there today. And then the other 1976 album um, I wanted to talk about here was Tom Waits' um, Small Change. Uh, this came out in 76. Obviously, I think this was a second or third album. Very bluesy, very laid back. Um, if you don't know Tom Waits, I highly recommend you check him out. Um, one of my favorite artists of all time. Even though I'm a huge metalhead, um, the diversity of every album that he's ever put out is just fantastic. Um, and there's, I talked about him in one of my other videos. The instrumentation he uses, his vocals can be really rough. Um, not death metal rough. He could probably be in a death metal band, though, if he really wanted to as much, uh, as many cigarettes as he smoked in his life. But um, he's just got a great voice, a great songwriter, great talent. I um, highly recommend you all check out Tom Waits. Not my favorite Tom Waits album. I don't know if I have a... I think Rain Dogs is probably up there, but um, still, great stuff nonetheless. Um, and the last one, show me the 200th album in your collection, if you can, the way you have your albums organized. So this was a bit of a challenge, too, although I think I have everything except for some new stuff down here. Um, alphabetized so all my records are in alphabetical order so what I did is I went to Discogs and went to my collection store sorted by artist and then I went down the list to 200 only with records though I didn't do CDs um, and number 200 in that list um, I only got to the B's so I have that was two number 200 I, uh, I have more records than I thought apparently um, this is the man who sold the world by David Bowie um, there's a lot of controversy. I shouldn't say controversy. Um, if you own this album, odds are you have a bootleg. Uh, I did not know I had a bootleg when I got this at a record store. Um, if you look this up on Discogs, there's tons of bootlegs of this album, and this was around the time when David Bowie was getting super popular. Um, there's really no tracking or anyone that knows where these bootlegs were recorded that I could find. Um, but there's various ways to tell if you have a bootleg. Um, this one, you can kind of tell just by the way the jacket's made. It's kind of just crappy. It's not um, Mercury Records quality. Um, on the back here, where you see the quote right here, notice there's a little space between the quote and the words here and here. Um, the original U.S. pressing, that quote was almost right up against um, those words. And the other way to tell is on the back here, um, if you look at the side one, all the Mad Men is listed as the second track, and Mad Men is one word. And then if you look at the label, all the Mad Men is... Uh, if you can see that, I don't know if you'd be able to see that shit or not. Ooh, the focus is kind of fucked up. Hang on. That's weird. It's like the words disappeared. Anyway, it says all the Mad Men, um, and Mad Men is two words. Um, so that's how, that's one way you can tell if you have a bootleg or not. Um, and there was something else. I think if the, the Matrix... The, and the etching in the, in the matrix, if it was um, scratched in and not stamped in, that's another um, telltale sign you have a bootleg. So if you have this album, and it's a, a quote-unquote original, uh, at least an older version, uh, pull it out and see what you got. Um, odds are 
um, based on my understanding, there weren't as many of these pressed um, at the time because, again, no one knew if he'd be that popular or not, and he, he exploded around this time. So, yeah, kind of interesting tidbit on that album I didn't know until I picked it up at a record store. So that is it for my entry. Again, thank you um, to um, Todd for running this. Um, congrats again on the subscribers. Um, I will link this to his video. I'll also link his videos below. Check them out, and I will catch you all soon. Later.